Okay, in this video we're going to take a look at this MFJ QRP CW transceiver kit. It's available in uh, different bands from 80 to 15 meters. Uh, the version I built here was for 40 meters. And I put this together for my friend Jerry uh, N2GJ. So you might hear the, uh, the receiver in the background, listening to it in the speaker here. And this is the assembled kit. And uh, pretty sensitive. I'm literally sitting in my basement. Uh, you can hear that CW call, or excuse me, CQ call. And uh, that's literally with this little alligator wire here. That's the, my whole antenna. So about a foot and a half long antenna sitting in the basement and uh, able to pick up uh, these signals pretty clearly. So let's turn the volume down here and, uh, and we'll talk about this. So the kit's really nice. It's an easy, easy one to build. It really just took me one evening to assemble. Uh, all of the surface mount components on the kit are you know, come already assembled. So uh, you're only assembling or you know putting in through hole components and there's only two toroids to wind uh, so a uh, very easy kit to assemble like I said it went together in one evening and then I spent the next evening uh, doing the uh, alignment of it which is uh, you know, pretty easy as well so and this is kind of what it looks like all put together so uh, for this video we're going to do a walkthrough of the circuit okay and uh, we'll take a look at the block diagram and then uh, walk through it in the schematics and kind of see how it goes together so uh, a pretty simple circuit but uh, pretty effective um, so let's kind of walk through it from the antenna through the receiver first. So the antennas here goes through a transmit receive switch. There's a couple of components we'll talk about on that. Uh, it goes through a bandpass filter to do the pre-selection of the 40 meter band to, to avoid uh, some out of band overload into the first receive mixer. The local oscillator is basically uh, what's tuned. It's varactor tuned uh, with the front panel control here. Okay. And, uh, and that, uh, the local oscillator in this case is about 5 megahertz. So, uh, and we're uh, basically using that 5 megahertz LO, the 7 megahertz signal coming in gives us an IF at 12 megahertz. So we go through an IF uh, amplifier. And then a, uh, a crystal uh, ladder filter here uh, that only has about 7 or 800 hertz of bandwidth. Okay. And then we're sending that, uh, that uh, signal to the product detector. And that's basically just another mixer with a beat frequency oscillator. Okay, this one is also at or very near 12 megahertz. Okay, it's actually only offset by about 600 hertz. And that gives us our 600 hertz beat note uh, coming out whenever we uh, hear a signal that we're tuned to. And that goes through a variable, electronically variable attenuator and audio amplifier. Okay, and uh, some feedback from the audio amp back to adjust the attenuator here and that's really the only automatic gain control or AGC in the whole receiver so there's no AGC you know throughout the uh, the IF uh, the front end of the IF chain but that's the receiver um, the nice thing is is that uh, it basically uses a whole set of 12 megahertz crystals those crystals are used for the uh, ladder filter here in the receiver they're also used for the BFO Okay, if we're doing the product detection of CW. And they're also used down here for the local oscillator for the transmitter. Okay, so we're taking that same uh, oscillator signal that's used as the LO on the receiver and going into the transmit mixer. Okay, and then mixing that with a 12 megahertz uh, local oscillator here to create our 7 megahertz transmit signal. Okay, and since everything is tuned with the same tune control, the transmitter and receiver are essentially locked together in frequency. Okay. And was, uh, this part of the alignment do is to adjust the offset here so that this offset matches the offset you get with the BFO uh, so that you're transmitting on the same frequency you're listening to. Okay. So the output of that mixer goes through a buffer, uh, through a bandpass filter to select the 7 megahertz uh, mixing product uh, out of the transmit mixer, and then through a driver, a PA, and then a final output filter because uh, the, uh, the PA is class C, I believe, so it's a... Uh, rich in harmonics so we basically just go through a filter to kind of tune that out and just get the uh, uh, the fundamental out and then that signal comes back around and through the transmit receive switch and out the antenna so that's the block diagram and we'll walk through this in the schematic so you can see uh, kind of how this thing is put together okay so schematics down here now the schematic as it comes in the book only occupies you know kind of a half page since this is kind of folded a folded eight and a half by eleven sheet of paper. So I uh, scanned it out of the manual and uh, made it a little bit larger so it's a little bit easier to follow. So let's follow the receive path first. So the antenna is right here. 
Okay, that signal comes in through the antenna up into this diode bridge. Okay, this diode bridge is the first part of the transmit receive um, switch. Uh, so the key you might see comes in here and controls these two transistors. So during receive, this transistor is off, okay, which means that this node here called plus T, which is the transmit power supply, is turned off. And then uh, we've got essentially 12 volts coming up here, turning this transistor on, which sends current through these diodes. When currents are through, current is through those diodes, little 1 in 914 uh, type diodes, they're just sw are, are switching diodes, they become low impedance and therefore the receive signal essentially passes through here okay and comes around the next thing it sees here is this guy this is just a uh, an enhancement mode uh, n channel mosfet and uh, its function is during transmit uh, will, it will turn on essentially short the receiver input to ground okay so it, to, to prevent the receiver from getting overloaded so these two things the uh, diode bridge here which will block signals during receive and this one which shunts the input basically you know, makes the uh, shuts the input of the receiver off um, but uh, even with that uh, there's just enough feed through uh, when you transmit that the actual receiver is used as your side tone monitor so uh, but that's part of just the uh, the transmit receive switch then the signal uh, with that being off during receive okay we go through this the LC uh, filter, this bandpass filter that's right here, is composed of uh, these capacitors, this inductor, this capacitor, this inductor, and these caps. Okay, so it's a so it's an LC bandpass filter. Okay, and that so that becomes our that's our bandpass filter here. Then we go into the mixer. The mixer is uh, uh, part of this uh, SA602 um, you know circuit. These are nice that they've got uh, the mixer built in and an oscillator built in. So the input to the mixer is here, okay? And then the, the oscillator components are sitting right here. So that's this local oscillator that's right here is actually part of that same SA602A, okay? So, uh, so these are the uh, uh, capacitor and inductor components for that local oscillator. You'll notice that one of those components is right here, this, uh, this varactor diode. Okay, now the varactor diode, you know, that's the one whose capacitance is proportional to its reverse bias. So you'll notice that uh, if we follow that up, it goes through this pot. This pot is connected through a resistor chain between the power supply and ground. And as you adjust that voltage up or down on that pot, you change the bias on the varactor. And that changes the tank circuit here, which changes the frequency of that local oscillator. So, uh, so that's what we have right there. Okay, uh, you may notice that the power supply for this whole mixer, this whole receive mixer and LO, comes out of a voltage regulator here, a little uh, eight, it was a 70, 78 LO8. So that's got a nice uh, regulated power supply, so it, it uh, stays stable uh, even if you've got a varying power supply voltage uh, coming in from the battery or whatever. And then there's just some local filtering, this uh, 1K and 0.1 mic uh, cap. You know, kind of give you some local filtering on the power supply. So that gets us up here through the receive mixer and the LO. Okay. From there, the converted output at the IF comes out of the output here, goes through this single transistor uh, IF amplifier, and then from there goes into the uh, crystal filter. So there's three 12 megahertz crystals here. Okay, that basically makes our seven or 800 hertz uh, IF filter. Okay, and then we go into another SA602. Okay, that SA602 is our product detector. Okay, and the local, the oscillator that's built into that one is used as our BFO or beat frequency oscillator. So we have our IF signal coming in here. We have our tune circuit here, another 12 megahertz crystal, and a little trimmer that allows us to, ju to adjust the offset of this 12 megahertz. Uh, crystal uh, frequency versus what we've got coming through the filter here so that we can get our 600 or so Hertz beat note out of the output okay so um, so that output comes out here then and uh, it, it basically comes out of the differential outputs here and gets applied to the input of this LM386 that LM386 is the audio amp uh, there are some filter components around that to kind of make it you know, have a bandpass frequency response in you know the 
six, seven, eight hundred uh, hertz range. Okay, and uh, so and then that output goes out and out to our headphone jack. Okay, the automatic gain control is done by basically diode detecting through this diode and this cap, detecting the the audio output level. Okay, and then applying that to the gate of this end channel MOSFET, and that MOSFET is applied across the inputs of the LM386. So if the audio level gets too high, this MOSFET gets turned on. That will start to, you know, throw some, you know, put some loss essentially, uh, and shunt those two inputs together, thereby reducing the signal level going into the op or into the audio amplifier. So that's essentially the audio AGC loop. And the volume control is this pot right here to control the volume out of the speaker. So that's the receiver path. Uh, just kind of following it through here, we went through the bandpass filter, the receive mixer, LO, IF amp, IF filter, product detector, and the AGC amp and a volume control for the speaker. So when we transmit, uh, our, the key here when you short uh, th this node to ground, this transistor shuts off. When that shuts off, that means that these diodes are now shut off, which means they present a high impedance now, so the receive signal doesn't go through into the receiver. And we also turn on this uh, shorting switch, if you will, that basically shorts the input to ground. But at the same time, we turn on this PNP transistor. By turning that guy on, this plus T voltage turns on. That plus T voltage now will allow us to turn on um, this circuit here. This circuit is the transmit mixer. So coming into the transmit mixer, we have the same local oscillator we used in the receiver. Okay, so if we follow that over here, okay, let's see, there's our local oscillator here. That comes in through this little JFET buffer, this little J310 uh, you know, source follower buffer. That buffer comes out here, okay, and that gets applied as one of the inputs to the mixer inside this, you know, another SA602 uh, chip. So that, uh, and by adjusting that level, we're essentially can adjust the output power level. Okay, so we take that buffered LO signal into this mixer, and then its oscillator is also comes from another 12 megahertz crystal that we can trim, so that we, by adjusting that, we can then adjust the transmit offset to equal the receive offset, so that we transmit on the same frequency that we listen to. Okay, um, so th this whole thing, that you know the uh, any, the 602 here and the driver that we're going to get to, or the buffer we're going to get to, is all powered off of that plus T voltage. So this stuff only gets turned on during transmit mode. So the output, which will be essentially, you know, the, the mix of this local oscillator and this crystal, so that should be at our transmit frequency, comes out here, goes through this guy right here, which is a simple um, buff, uh, transmit buffer amplifier, and that's this guy right here. Okay, so then the output of that goes through this uh, Pi filter here, Okay, it's actually you know, a couple of components. It's a little bit more complex than a Pi filter. That's essentially our transmit bandpass filter right here. Okay, that's our transmit bandpass filter. From there, we go to uh, a PN2222A, which essentially becomes our driver uh, for the PA. And the PA is this guy right here, this 2N5109. Okay, so this PA is our is our final output transistor. Its output then comes out through this uh, uh, combination of capacitor and inductors, these are the toroids that we, were, we round. This essentially becomes our transmit filter, okay, and that's the final thing right here with our transmit filter, and then the output from that, we follow that all the way out, goes right out to the antenna. So that's the circuit walkthrough for this little uh, MFJ uh, CUB uh, pure PCW transceiver, and, uh, and it works really well. If we turn the volume back up here, we'll do a quick little band sweep. So uh, for the 40 and 80 meter versions of this, the tuning is at the lowest frequency when you're fully clockwise on the uh, tune control. And this one has got about uh, 65 to 70 kilohertz of, uh, of tuning range. So we're sitting up at about 7.07. Uh, megahertz or so here and we can tune down to about 7.005 so we'll just do a band sweep here let you listen to it as we kind of sweep through there's a contest this weekend so there's a lot of activity on 40 meters so it'll be fun to listen to
right in the middle is about 7.040, kind of the QRP frequency is right about in the middle of where I've got this thing aligned. And we'll continue going down to the low end of the band. Picking up quite a number of signals, uh, just with uh, a little alligator clip lead uh, in the basement here as an antenna. So uh, should prove to have a pretty sensitive receiver and uh, work really well, you know, out in the field. So anyway, I hope you enjoyed that. Learned a little something about. Uh, I'll turn that volume down here. Learned a little something about how this transceiver uh, operates and what its circuit looks like, and uh, from the block diagram, and. Uh, I don't know, I might do a video more, uh, video or two more on this before I uh, send it off to, uh, to Jerry for him to go play with. But it was a fun kit to build and uh, a fun little circuit to go take a look at.